I don't think so. What was the real reason that the Grand Master of the Jedi Order, Master Yoda, hated the lightsaber built by his last Padawan, Dooku of Sereno? Wait, put your weapon! I mean you no harm! Why did Dooku build such a unique hilt, and what was it about the design that caused Yoda to worry so much about his Jedi Padawan? Powerful you have become, Dooku. The dark side I sense in you. Today we are looking at the relationship between Count Dooku and his master Yoda, and talking about why Yoda despised Dooku's lightsabers so much. I've been looking forward to this. Before we answer that, I wanted to say that most of this information comes from the audiobook Dooku Jedi Lost, which is available on Audible, and because I was covering the audiobook, they were kind enough to actually sponsor this video and offer a free audiobook and one month free to all my friends in the Lore Star community. So if you do want to listen to this audio production yourself, you can either click the link in the description, go to audible.com slash lorestar, or text lorestar to 500-500. You'll also have access to their Audible Originals for that month, as well as their entire library of books, podcasts, and, well, pretty much everything. If an item does not appear in our records, it does not exist. The code is good for any audiobook you like, totally free, but if you're like me, you'll probably end up spending every last credit on their massive Star Wars library. And do you know what knowledge is? Tell me. Knowledge is power. It is obvious that this contest cannot be decided by our knowledge of the Force, but by our skills with a lightsaber. Now, in order to talk about why Yoda held Dooku's lightsaber in such disdain, we must first understand the purpose of its design. Count Dooku was first introduced in Star Wars Attack of the Clones as an elegant dignitary. A former Jedi political idealist, Dooku had a regal presence and carried himself with dignity and charm, much in part thanks to the acting of the late Sir Christopher Lee. Ah, he has a very powerful face, doesn't he? Of course, this was not all Dooku was remembered for. Hanging from his belt and keeping with his anachronistic elegance was a lightsaber of an old design, a design that evoked images of the Jedi's ancient heritage and history. The lightsaber was curved at the hilt, producing unorthodox angles of attack, and allowing the wielder to more deftly manipulate the blade with the single-handed lightsaber style, Makashi, or more simply known as Form 2. Close quarter fighting, Bilaba's emphasis was always on Form 3 which you favor to a ridiculous degree. This lightsaber style was favored by Dooku for its elegance and precision, favoring quick, clean strikes that were pleasing to the eye and more energy efficient for prolonged duels. Form 2 also favored disarming strikes rather than fatal blows, allowing the duelist to more nobly disarm their opponent. However, unlike most lightsaber forms, Makashi was not designed to be competitive against enemies with blasters. While a skilled swordsman could still use the form to deflect blaster bolts, the form was refined to masterfully combat lightsaber-wielding opponents almost exclusively. This focus was compounded when combined with a curved hilt, which was, again, designed specifically to be a duelist weapon. More accurately, designed to be a weapon used in duels against other lightsabers. Dooku was not the first Jedi or Sith to make use of a curved lightsaber hilt, as the design had been favored by many Jedi during the era when duels between Jedi and Sith were common. Which one do you choose? A simple grip? The curved approach? As all lightsabers are unique, so too were curved lightsabers, with no two curved hilts having quite the same angle or curvature. Dooku's lightsaber was crafted with painstaking intentionality, refined over decades to create the perfect weapon. While we do not know if his first lightsaber was curved, the audiobook Dooku Jedi Lost confirms that he was, in fact, already using a curved hilt by the age of 15, a full year before he was selected by Yoda to be the Grand Master's final Padawan. On Dooku's lightsaber, the curve below the emitter ensured that the blade left the hilt at an unorthodox angle relative to the wielder's hand, making the strikes more difficult to anticipate and counter. Likewise, the elbow on the back of Dooku's hilt served two functions. First, as a counterweight to properly balance the blade in his hand, and second, the angled pommel could be used as a leverage point by placing the offhand against it. 
Now, by the age of 10, Dooku was already recognized as the best duelist in his class, receiving consistently high marks in all of his classes, but especially swordsmanship. He was one of the most brilliant Jedi I've had the privilege of knowing. The young Dooku fed obsessively on the praise and recognition of his elders, not allowing himself to become stagnant or content simply being better than his peers. He continued to push himself far beyond, never satisfied with his own skill. Good. Twice the pride, double the fall. So much so that he was almost late for his own tournament where he would be selected as a Padawan, pushing himself to train and practice until the very last minute. However, at this point in Jedi history, the lightsaber was considered a largely ceremonial weapon with little real combat value. The Jedi of this era rarely used their lightsabers in actual combat, with the mere display of the weapon on their belt usually being sufficient to de-escalate most threats. I saw your laser sword. Only Jedis carry that kind of weapon. The Jedi of this era would often travel to Republic worlds and perform ceremonial demonstrations and mock duels to entertain and amuse the Republic citizens. Dooku, however, was not content with this status quo, believing that the Jedi needed to take real action to protect the people of the Republic, not simply be performing for their amusement or make appearances at high-profile events. Having been exposed to the power of the dark side at the age of 10, Dooku realized that the threat of the Sith was not over. He began to suspect that the Sith had held out in secret for the past 900 years and began to search for the proofs of their continued existence. Even before he selected Dooku as his Padawan, Yoda condemned Dooku for this, reprimanding him for not accepting the knowledge that all Jedi assumed to be true, that the Sith threat was over. Impossible. The Sith have been extinct for a millennium. Yoda began to grow concerned that Dooku was chasing shadows, hunting for an enemy that had been extinct for a nearly a millennia. Yoda watched Dooku closely, observing the young Jedi initiate as he continued through his training. Yoda was concerned by Dooku's obsession with destroying the Sith, and these fears were compounded by the style of lightsaber that Dooku built for himself. When he was about 14 years old, Dooku's childhood friend, Sifo Dyas, woke Dooku in the middle of the night, claiming to have a journal that spoke of hidden passages within the Jedi Temple. Dooku dragged Sifo Dyas into the Jedi archives, using him to help open a hidden door and sneak inside. There, Dooku found something that would forever shape the way he saw the Jedi and the Sith. An entire cache of dark side relics and Sith artifacts. Dooku was trapped in there among the power of the dark side, a power that the Jedi had in their hubris thought to accumulate within their very temple. It would be another year before Dooku engaged in his first true lightsaber duel, accusing the Jedi Master Lean Kastana of being a dark lady of the Sith. The Jedi Master played along, allowing the Initiate to engage her in full lightsaber combat. Despite being only 15 years old, Dooku held his own against the Jedi Master, rendering them both out of breath by the duel's end. Kastana was eventually so overwhelmed by the young duelist that she called out in exhaustion for Dooku to stop. But Dooku was convinced that she was a Dark Lady of the Sith and continued his barrage until the two were interrupted by an outraged Master Yoda. Of course, Dooku had misjudged Kastana and was simply over-eager to expose the return of the Sith, and this gravely concerned Master Yoda. In this event, Dooku was forced to realize his own pull to the dark side, and the anger and passion that had already touched him. Yoda began to watch Dooku even more closely than he had before, and over the next year, he would take Dooku as his apprentice. This was no small decision, as it had been over a century since he had last trained a Padawan, and it was exceedingly rare for a member of the Jedi Council, and much more a Jedi Grand Master, to train an apprentice. But Yoda broke the status quo because he was concerned about Dooku and hoped to dissuade him from chasing these shadows. But still, that didn't stop Dooku from believing that the Sith threat was real. Yoda even refused to train Dooku in saber combat, believing that he had already far surpassed what was sufficient and believed it would be more prudent for him to focus his time and efforts on other matters. Much to Yoda's disappointment though, Dooku continued to refine his curved hilt and train as a swordsman. Dooku focused his energy into Mikashi and studied the nuances of the curved hilt, dedicated to refining the perfect saber-to-saber -saber combat style. 
This is why it concerned Master Yoda. The curved hilt was ultimately designed to exploit and off-balance enemies carrying other lightsabers. As far as Yoda knew, the only beings in the galaxy using lightsabers at this time were other Jedi, as he had decided to ignore the warnings of a remnant Sith threat. Even though Jedi Master Lean Kastana shared and even fostered Dooku's belief that the Sith were still a threat, Master Yoda opted to stifle Dooku, using the Force to enter Dooku's mind and actually repress his memories so that he might not be so concerned with the Sith anymore. However, even under the watch of Master Yoda, Dooku continued to prepare for the Sith's return. Searching for ancient relics, studying their history, and perfecting the art of saber-to-saber -saber combat. Even though Yoda did not openly forbid this, his concern turned to fear and later disdain for the path Dooku chose, believing the curved hilt would lead him to crave combat. Yoda did not foster this desire to obliterate the Sith, instead only rebuking his desire for combat. And because of this, Dooku eventually came to believe more and more that the Jedi had allowed their arrogance and complacency to make them pawns of the Senate, ironically being one of the biggest factors to drive him away from the Order, becoming the 20th Jedi Master in the history of the Jedi to walk away. In the end, I think he left because he lost faith in the Republic. Yoda believed that Dooku's curved hilt and focus on Makashi Form 2 would make him crave the duel that he prepared for, and feared that he would one day turn his blade towards another Jedi. However, the question must be asked. If Yoda had listened to Kastana and to Dooku, if he had allowed his Padawan to train so diligently to be the first line of defense against the rising Sith threat, do you think Dooku still would have turned away from the Order? In the end, Dooku was right, and he would, in fact, be alive to see the return of the Sith. And Dooku's lightsaber would, in fact, see combat in a duel between Jedi and Sith. However, Dooku would engage in the duel on the side that he had fought so diligently to root out. In conclusion, Master Yoda believed that Dooku's hilt emphasized lightsaber to lightsaber combat and that this focus was not necessary because he believed that there were no Sith around. And this style would inspire a heart of conflict. But do you think Dooku would have even turned if he believed that the Jedi were willing to be vigilant for the Sith's return? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below because I want to know what you, my friends, have to say about our favorite galaxy far, far away. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, may the lore be with you, now and forever.